Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to week two of the Balls Deep podcast, Fantasy Six Pack. I'm your host, Bert, a.k.a. Thinky Town. We've got my wonderful co-host, Dave Eddy, here in the house. Dave, good to have you back. Hey, what's going on, Bert? I guess we're going to try this again. Guess we're going to try this again. It was uh, a good time. Next time, you know, I'll try everything three times. You know, so I think it's uh, beneficial to, to give this another whirl. How was your week? Right. How was your weekend? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I got uh, – I think I hit I hit a couple home runs on some of my picks. Uh, Hawkinson for sure. Um, you know, one of my big sleepers from last week. Uh, he put up quite a few – Good numbers. I had him in pretty much every lineup. Um, I mean, Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, uh, those guys all did really well. Chris Carson. So, I mean, for the most part, I'd say my my top picks, you know, hit pretty good. Yes, they did. Did you come in the money this? Uh, yeah, I sure did. I, I definitely won more than my uh, fair share of entries. Did you come in the money this weekend? Yeah. That is what's up. That's what we're trying to do each and every week. Unfortunately, what did not come in the money this week was our lineup, which I have to take responsibility for because uh, I thought Marquise Lee could be a sneaky $3 play, and he put up a big fat zero. (laughs) Uh, It wasn't going to matter much anyway. We finished with a total of 151.2 points. Our core was there. McCaffrey was the best running back on the board. Dalvin Cook had a big game. Hawkinson had a big game. Uh, Didi wasn't awful. Odell didn't do anything too much. Uh, and then Foles leaving with that injury. I think Foles would have been in for a big one. If you put in the points the backup had, uh, I think he could have uh, really pushed it over the edge. But that injury really shut us out for the rest of the time, which was unfortunate. But it was good to see some of our guys come through. It's good to see some of our guys come through. And I'm looking forward to putting together some more winners this week. And, uh, again, to cash in that $3 one that we're going to put together at the end of the episode. Yeah, for sure. I was, I was just looking back to see what my high score for last week was. Um, my top lineup got 219.06 last week. Right. Dave, on which site? Uh, Jeff Kings. Very nice. That's a that's a good score. That is a good score. I'm bringing mine up right now from last week. My best lineup put up a – let's see here. I had a 203, and that was it. That was, uh, that was my best score of the week. So not bad. Always good to get, uh, always good to get over, over 200 there. Yeah, for sure. But on to the next one. We can't be living in the past. It's time to move forward. It's also interesting, too, because I've had higher scores, but the mm-hmm. one line that I put in for the $100 single entry contest, which is my go-to, put up a, uh, a 178. Ironically, came in 178th place, and it, uh, it was a minimum cash, so I was happy about that. Yeah, so, money is money. Money is money. Anything green is better than the white. Let's go into the Thursday game. Last Thursday was a dud in terms of points, but we still came out cashing, Mm -hmm. which was good. Let's go ahead and look at this upcoming week here. We got the Bucks. We got the Panthers, two NFC South teams who are uh, questionable. Two very questionable teams. Who do you like as your captain? Who do you like anchoring your squad in the showdown? Well, I'll tell you what. um, This Thursday, um, there wasn't anyone that I found. uh, Like last week, I, you know, I kind of like Cohen. um, And so I went with him as my captain. Like I said, if I can, I try to save that money um, and try to, you know, hit a home run with that captain. And, um, you know, kind of if you hit a home run with that captain with a cheap guy, I feel like you're, you know, really good shape with the rest of your lineup. This week, I didn't really find that guy, um, so I'm ponying up, um, and I'm going with uh, McCaffrey as my captain this week. I think he's going to be a pretty safe bet to go crazy, 
Uh, so I'm going to, you know, pay up and, and take those points. I like it. Yeah, you know, if a guy that puts up 45 points, that's an extra 22 on top of your score. It's almost four additional touchdowns, which is pretty crazy. You know, McCaffrey's going to get involved. I like that. So if you're going McCaffrey as your captain here, it's going to leave uh, it's going to leave some room for the imagination to fill out the final five spots, your five flexes. You want to tell me yeah. how that's going to roll out for you and, and why you're cons- Yeah. So, um, you know, I always start off with the captain um, and then, you know, I decide how to build the rest of my lineup from there. So last week I, you know, went a little bit cheaper. So I was able to kind of round out the lineup with a little more, you know, top end guys. Um, I still went with a kicker last week just so that, I know I could really kind of have my, my pick of, you know, the litter, if you will, for the rest of them. Um, so this week with going with McCaffrey, um, I felt as though I had, you know, no choice to, you know, at least get a kicker if I didn't, you know, go crazy and, you know, find a guy that was, you know, $1,000 or less that I thought had a chance. Um, I didn't find anyone that was that low that I felt like was worth rostering. Um, so I went with the Carolina kicker, um, who I didn't even know his name. Um, but Joey Sly, hopefully that's a sly little pick for 3400 Um, So I went cheap there. Um, and so then after that, then I just started looking to see, you know, who would be someone, maybe the last guy that I'd be willing to pay a little bit for, um, you know, so that, you know, I wouldn't just have a bunch of guys that I wasn't too confident in. You know, I just was spending money because I, um, you know, had so little because of McCaffrey. So um, I actually think that Goodwin this week, um, really isn't too bad of a pickup. So um, so Chris Goodwin with Mike Evans being a little bit hurt, um, I can really see him getting some some extra targets this week. And he really wasn't that expensive. Uh, he's 8600 so he's the next most expensive guy that I have. Um, but I feel like that was a pretty good value. Uh, and then along the same lines, um, you know, I was thinking who would be the next guy to get targets there. Um, well, the next guy to get targets might actually be the first guy to get targets and and so I went with O.J. Howard, uh, 6,600 for there. So feeling pretty good with those spots. Um, but I didn't have a whole ton of money at that point left to spend. So um, pretty much the best of what was left, um, I had to get somebody from Carolina. Because at that point, other than McCaffrey, um, you know, offensively speaking, I already had Goodwin and Howard. So I uh, didn't like any of the running backs from Tampa Bay. Really didn't like any running backs from – Carolina um, because I already had McCaffrey so decided to go uh, two receivers from Carolina and I had enough money to get uh, DJ Moore um, who you know should get the most targets there anyways so I feel like I've got um, a good pick there and then I had about $4,800 left exactly and Jarius uh, Wright was there and he fits the you know the spot of something I didn't necessarily have if you will because I couldn't go with another Tampa Bay receiver um, and so I got a, a second Carolina receiver so I think all in all for paying up for McCaffrey um, I think I managed to get a pretty good lineup in there I like it I like it a lot We're on the same page for some of them but I'm doing a bit of a pivot so there's two ways that I'm looking at this one one the, the game is projected to be a shootout not always the case on Thursday night. So if I want to get real contrarian, I might go with a lineup with kickers and defense and have enough salary left over to take my future ex-wife to a nice steak dinner. <laughs> but that's not how we're going to go about this one. As you know, and as I've mentioned, Brashad Perryman, my favorite player in best ball, my favorite deep shot, I think he's going to be good. Two to three weeks this season where he just has – Two touchdowns if Jameis Winston can never uh, get it all together. So you say Evans is a little hurt. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Chris Godwin. You mentioned O.J. Howard. I'm putting Brashad Perryman in my captain spot. I've just got a feeling that this week is the week it does it. So I nailed the captain last week with Allen Robinson. I'm just going to go crazy and do the long shot to Sean Jackson role in the captain spot because if he scores – he scores one touchdown. We are looking good. And to fill him up there, I'm going with both quarterbacks. I'm going to put Jameis Winston and Cam Newton in there. 
I'm going to get my stud in McCaffrey. And then my final two flex picks, we're going to rock with Joey Sly as well. Yes. Kicker. And then the last spot, we're going we're gonna to give it to Ronald Jones. Maybe Ronald Jones picks up some slack. I was looking at, at Dare Agonbalwe. Mm-hmm. However, uh, you know, I might run it with Jones. And this is one where I, I like the lineup enough where I'll probably do an entry where I have both of them in that last spot. Because if one of them pops off uh, as a pass catcher in a high octane game, then uh, we could be looking at a very nice payout. So I'm excited for the captain mode. I know that you had mentioned, you know, they really brought this contest to the to the forefront last year, and this is your first time really going at the, the captain one, putting a focus on it. What what'd you think last week? Well, did, you, I mean, did it help I mean, your in game experience? Uh, well, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it, it always helps the in-game experience. So, you know, um, as a Lions fan, I especially don't care to watch the, the Bears and Packers play very much. So, you know, having particular guys to root for always always helps. So, um, I mean, I, I did a few of the showdowns last year, but, um, you know, not definitely didn't even do like one a week because um, I'm a, kind of a creature of habit. And so the classic is kind of, what I'm used to and, you know, that's what I'm comfortable with. So, you know, that's what I've been sticking to, but the captain isn't too bad. I just got to figure out exactly, you know, what my strategy is going forward. Um, and so, you know, this week I'm doing something that's a little bit different than I did last week. And I did well last week I cashed. Um, but, you know, I'm, this week I had, I think I got a little bit better sh- shot to do a, um, a better cash. Awesome. Well, let's go move forward to your wheelhouse here, which is the full game slate on Sunday. A lot of high scoring last week. Unexpected. Some players really put up monster monster games. There, who's the one guy where you are building all the games around? Last week, it, we had Dalvin Cook. We both mutually agreed on that. And we had McCaffrey. So we started the running back position. I think uh, that could be another spot to, to get back into it. So who is your lock of the week, regardless of position, someone that you're starting every lineup with? Well, um, I've got a couple of guys. I, I think that, you know, and this is unusual for me, but I think that just like last week, I think a lot of my lineups, um, the, the core of it is going to be the same. And then, you know, I'll, I'll flip around some of the, the other pieces um, and, you know, this week is going to be the same, um, which is, like I said, really weird. So I guess I would say the guy that is going to be the biggest lock for me um, is going to be Sammy Watkins. And part of me hesitates just because I think his ownership is going to be really high um, and not just so much because of the week he had last week. But with Tyreek Hill being out, I think he's kind of like that obvious, like, oh, everyone, you know, and their mom is going to go with him. But I also think that he's going to have such a big week uh, that you are almost going to have to have him in a lineup if you're going to have a chance to win. That's the thing with Daly. If one guy goes off and has an absurd week and it has even the slightest bit of ownership, one of the popular guys – you are toast if he's not in your lineup, which is the yeah. fun part of always trying to figure out who's going to be the chalk worth playing and who's going to be the Bart Simpsons. I know we like that. I think uh, it'd be a fun time to call it the Bart Simpsons of who the chalk plays are. Bart Simpson, uh, maybe the most famous person associated with chalk. And he writes it on the board. The question is, is the Bart Simpson going to be the chalk guy that we'd like to play or the chalk guy that we're avoiding or just chalk in general? Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, for this week, it, as much as I, you know, hate to, to jump on the guy that I think everyone else is going to be on. Like I said, I, I just think Watkins is just too likely to have a big week. Now I'm not saying he's going to repeat last week's numbers exactly, but I can't see him not, you know, catching a score and getting a hundred yards in, in that matchup. So I'm um, going to, you know, and he's not even that expensive, really. Um, I think he was, what, what is he? Let me look real quick. I think he's 7,200. 7, so I don't think that's, that's too bad whenever he could be the highest scorer of the week again. 
It is the seventh highest priced wide receiver on the slate. Yeah, so I I'm think fine with that. Pretty nice price. Uh, but again, yeah, if he's going to be the highest receiver on the slate, then yeah, there's no price that's too big. So let's go ahead top to bottom for positions. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Let's do what we did last week. Give me your top two quarterbacks, maybe one who is your favorite play and then one who you think would be a, uh, a low ownership guy. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'm, I'm going with the same guy. Um, I think the top play is also my top sleeper for the week. Um, and I'm going David Carr. I'm not a huge David Carr fan, but as far as DFS gets concerned for starters for the week, he is the sixth cheapest um, option. And, you know, he's going against Kansas City's defense, which, you know, is is good to begin with. Um, And then you figure, you know, there's a good chance that they'll be playing from behind. So I really can see, you know, um, I could really see Derek Carr going going crazy. So um, got him as actually my top quarterback and also as my sleeper. Very nice. What about a quarterback who you think will will be highly owned, but you're not touching with 10-foot pole? Yep. So the guy that won me a bunch of money last week um, and a couple lineups, um, we didn't talk about it. It was kind of just, you know, one of those guys I, I threw in to mix some things up um, is a guy that I'm not going to touch this week at all. And that's Lamar Jackson, uh, second highest salary for quarterbacks. Um, doesn't have the, the same easy Miami Dolphins lineup to play against. And I can just see a lot of people rolling with him after that huge week he had last week. And he, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for him this week for anything. Very nice. So I've got a thought on Lamar Jackson there too, and it's kind of in the opposite corner. I definitely agree there will be a lot of people that are point chasing, but I think Lamar could be for real. And he's at home versus an Arizona offense, which is going to run a lot of plays. I played your boy Matthew Stafford last week in a bunch, and he came through just purely on the thought process of quarterbacks getting a lot of action versus the Cardinals. It's kind of the same thing we saw with Chip Kelly was the coach of the Eagles. And it's definitely a position that I'm going to be targeting more often this season. And I'm a little bummed that Baltimore gets Arizona this week because of the hype on Lamar Jackson. I think he'll probably be the most popular quarterback on the board this week, even at his price, even as the second highest costing quarterback on the slate. So Lamar Jackson is someone I've in, I'm interested in. My favorite quarterback of the week is going to be Dak Prescott. I, I like Dak. Dak typically owns Washington. That Kellen Moore offense, uh, as an Eagles fan, I'm not happy to say, but it looks smooth. It looks really smooth as a play caller. He's calling guys open. Randall Cobb looks like he's five years ago with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Amari Cooper's a beast. Uh, I like Dak Prescott there in a road matchup versus a putrid Washington defense that just got lit up by Carson Wentz. And uh, I think that's going to be one to attack all season as well. So I am a big fan of Dak there. And if we're going to get really crazy. If you're talking about getting really crazy, I feel like I know where you're going with this one. (laughs) Dave, got it. Yep. So, again, I like Darner Minshew, second. If you really want to stretch it out, Houston's another team that's going to put up a lot of points and uh, you got to keep up with them. Minshew looked pretty good. So, if you want to go for a bottom barrel quarterback, I think he could be a nice play in a uh, in an expected shootout. So, Well, I tell you what, Bert, I think that uh... – and we'll get a little more into it, I think, later. But I think that this is going to be a week where you and I are going to be on very opposite sides <laughs> of the coin. Um, and one of us is going to be right and one of us is going to be wrong. Because um, I've got a couple of things already that, that are, you know, we're, we're on opposite sides of the coin. I like it. It makes things more fun. It'd be boring if we agreed all the time. 
Yeah, this is not that week. Uh, it doesn't sound like it at all. So it, it'll be interesting to see how we come together for a lineup at the end of the podcast. Right. right so right, we right. talked a little about uh, running backs, but let's go ahead and uh, just reemphasize your running back plays of the week. So this week, um, again, I'm going to stick with Dalvin Cook. I see no reason to shy away from him. Um, I mean, workhorse running back against, uh, you know, division opponents. So they know each other pretty well. That NFC North is going to be a lot of smash mouth. So I, I see no reason to think that, that Cook isn't going to get his fair share and then some. And then um, I'm spending up on a lot of positions this week because I've got quite a few value plays um, that's going to be part of my core. So I'm actually – Got plenty enough money that I'm rolling with uh, Alvin Kamara as well. I think they're going to have a very high-scoring game uh, against the Rams. Doesn't really, you know, have anyone around uh, with Ingram gone to, to kind of steal carries. So, is he going to get carries? Is he going to get balls out of the backfield? I think Kamara's, you know, got that potential to be just an absolute home run guy like I had with uh, McCaffrey last week. Love it. What about your top fade of the week at running back? So this week I would go with, um, well, really, I mean, I have two guys listed, um, but really there's only one running back matchup that I really don't like. Um, and that's David Johnson. I don't, I don't like David Johnson going against that Baltimore defense. Uh, he didn't impress me at all last week against the lions. Um, and he's only facing a, a much tougher team. Uh, so David Johnson was really the only running back that I would say I would strongly fade. The only other guy that I would even mention uh, is Joe Mixon. And it's not even that I have a big problem with Joe Mixon or really his matchup. Uh, It's just more that his injury, you know, scares me. And they've got a pretty good backup in Bernard. So, uh, you know, I would just – I would personally fade Mixon this week just just because I'm a pussy, I guess, and I'm scared of him, you know, getting zero points because he doesn't play or doesn't play much. That's always a possibility when it comes to an injury. However, it's going to be something to monitor. I think it could be a pretty easy decision. If he's going to be active any place, I think he'll be able to give it a go. If not, they'll probably inactivate him. So my running backs love me some Sony Michelle this week. I think he's my lock city as Dalvin was last week. Um, got, very little run in uh, their week one matchup against Pittsburgh, which the Patriots won handily. Uh, I, I went to the well last week again, but obviously that didn't work. And uh, I think Sony's in for a good one against just a putrid Miami defense. And I think he's good for two touchdowns. Uh, I'm also rounding that out with, uh, I love me some Derrick Henry. Uh, Derrick Henry was a, a vital contributor to me. In my lineups last week, I just thought the Browns were overrated. Uh, the Titans really came through. They've got a nice line. And Derrick Henry was unbelievable at the end of last year. He's healthy. He's running behind the good line and an offense that completely revolves around him. And I just think that he has one of the highest floors out of any running back. I'm also looking at Kenny and Drake, uh, looking for him to play behind. And I, uh, I definitely want to get a lineup with Drake and Sony Michelle. It's not too often you get two running backs from the same game that are so aligned on the game script with Sony kind of milking it, milking a lead and playing with the Patriots ahead and Kenyon Drake as the pass catching back on Miami. I know they've still got Balazs technically as a starter, but Drake could pull one. Maybe he's good for four or five catches this week. A good way to attack the New England defense. And uh, that could be a nice little combo that stacks up and gives you a nice little game script there. Another person, two other running backs to mention, Josh Jacobs. He's just too cheap with too high of a floor. And another plus matchup, he was kind of hidden all offseason, didn't want to get on hard knocks, uh, which made me respect him. And uh, they, they clearly have a plan for him, and he's a good runner, as we saw on Monday night. And then we've got Chris Thompson. I uh, expect them to be down heavily in uh, at home against Dallas, and he's someone I'm going to have in the lineup in the other end of that game when I, I'm playing Dak and Amari. Speaking of Amari, 
He's a wide receiver. He's my top wide receiver on the board this week. What are your thoughts on uh, Amari Cooper, and who do you like as your wide receiver, top wide receiver of the week? Um, well, I mean, I think Amari Cooper has a chance to um, have a good week this week. Uh, I mean, kind of obviously. Um, last week, I actually – it was in my notes, but I didn't necessarily get around to it. I actually liked Randall Cobb last week uh, just because I know Cooper was hurting a little bit. Um, and I'm – especially in DFS, I, I really try to shy away from guys that, you know, are are hurt in any fashion. It just it just scares me too much. That's kind of why I, I said about Mixon, you know, this week. Uh, I, not to say that I won't necessarily play them, but I'm only going to do that if I don't have other options that I really like. Um, and as far as my receivers, uh, we already talked about Sammy Watkins. Um, Sammy Watkins is, you know, a guy that, that I'm, I'm all in on um, for price wise, but because of some of the other positions we're going to get to here, um, I saved so much money at all these positions that I still, even with having um, paid up for Kamara paid up for cook. Um, I've got a lot of Michael Thomas this week. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, stacks of the Saints and going Kamara, Thompson, Breeze, because I think that Rams game is going to be a shootout. Um, I don't want to get and ruin too much of my, my other stack quite yet. Um, but um, Michael Thomas, Sammy Watkins are two people that, that, I'm, that I'm pretty big on this week for receivers. That's my um, next question when it came to Drew Breeze, because we didn't talk about quarterback Mm -hmm. if you're playing Kamara you're playing Michael Thomas yep you know it's uh it's good you mentioned that you might as well get the guy who's slinging it to him well but like I said the rest of the lineup you'll understand um you know I've got Derek Carr so I'm actually kind of doing a lot of you know splitting I'm almost I can't really do two stacks because you can only start one quarterback but even though I've got a, a lot of Kamara and I've got a lot of uh Michael Thomas I've got Derek Carr because I fully intend on, on, on stacking the Raiders this week. So Tyrell Williams um, is the guy that, you know, every time I have Carr, I've got Tyrell Williams. Uh, I think he's got a great matchup versus KC. And because I think, you know, Carr was such a good value, um, I, I was able to find a pretty good three-way stack uh, with Carr. Uh, Williams is, is definitely a big part of that. I, I, I really think he – you know, he's kind of hit or miss. Like last year, I know he started off on fire and then he completely disappeared. Um, I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case, at least as bad this year. Uh, he doesn't have, you know, the same competition that he did uh, last year. So I don't think he's going to blow it up, you know, every single week. But I think this is a, another good week for him. Does your tight end rhyme with Schmarren Schmaller? It, it does. How, <laughs> how could you have possibly guessed? Just a hunch. Just a hunch there. I like it. That's a good segue to the tight end. There's really not much you need to explain for that one if you're going to have the stack there. You know, Waller right. got a ton of the snaps. I think he's a great play, especially if you're going to go with, with Carr as a quarterback. Yeah, so to me that was easy. Um, I mean, really when I was looking at the tight ends, tight ends usually a, a spot where I, I save money. So just like in baseball, you know, the catching position, I very rarely pay for. Um, that's usually a position where I save a bunch of money. Tight end, especially with, you know, how well Hawkinson played in, in week one. And I don't know how the hell it's possible, but he actually is $100 cheaper this week than he was last week. Uh, so it's kind of hard not to throw uh, Hawkinson into my tight end spot. Um, but because of the money spent on Cook and Kamara and Thomas and Watkins, um, you know, I, I saved some good money with Waller and then spoiler alert here for the next part, uh, the flex, I've actually got Hawkinson as, as my flex. A lot of it's cause I, I have to save money, but I also don't think it's a bad the pick. Too tight and built. I love it. Absolutely love it there. Um, something too cheap tight ends. I mean, if they both pop, they can go mm-hmm. it's a bill that i've done maybe once twice and i was rolling with a uh, a kelsey and an Ertz uh back last year i don't know if that's the direction yep. that I, I would go to save salary as i'd like the receivers but they both have relatively high floors for their price uh if you're gonna go that cheap there they're definitely involved in their offense and i, I think that could uh i think that could lead to a nice little uh, a nice little success there if both of them just are as involved so 
let's go ahead, move forward here, and let's build a lineup again. Hopefully we can choose a quarterback who is not going to get hurt in the first quarter. I think that would be really beneficial to our pockets there. All right. That's a shame on both of us there, Dave. How dare we pick a quarterback who's going to get smoked in the f- – I, I tell you what, if, if it keeps happening, they're gonna they're gonna put the balls deep curse on just like they have the Madden curse. You do not want to get hit with the balls deep curse. That'd be too deep. No, don't want the balls to go too deep, or you want to go as deep as possible, <laughs> depending how you look at it. There, Dave. Right? Maybe maybe a little depending bit of how you look at it. There. So all right, I've got DraftKings loaded, three dollar entry, about. Five million entries in this tournament. Not really, but it feels like it. Um, where are we starting off? What's our core? Uh, we've got. Uh, let's see. Did we agree on anything this week? I don't. I don't know. Last week we agreed on at least Cook. Um, I don't know that we agreed on anything this week. Um, I'll tell you what. One thing that we didn't really get to, um, just real quick. Um, I know you were talking about, um, you know, like in the Jags quarterback to save money this week and, um, and that fun stuff. Well, my biggest, um, my biggest play at defense this week is actually the Texans. Um, Very, very similar to last week where I thought, you know, the Lions might be able to get to uh, Murray, which I don't want to necessarily get into too much, but for three quarters, they sure as hell did. Um, I, I could really see the Texans kind of doing the same thing um, against Minshew. So, um, so Texans are, are a big one for me for defense, um, which is, again, they're kind of middle of the pack. So another way for me to save money um, to get my studs. But as far as our lineup this week, um, I don't know. You, It's a little different than, like I said, last week where we kind of had some guys we could kind of just fit in because we agreed. And I don't think we've mentioned two of the same names yet. So maybe you want to pick um, – are you comfortable with either I'll – let, I'll let it be your call if you want to, to either go with an Oakland or go with the Saints stack? Well, how about this? Let's lock in Alvin Kamara right now. Let's lock in okay. Alvin Kamara, 8,200 on DraftKings. He's going to be our running back one. I In this $3 tournament, I really think Derrick Henry is going to be less than 5% ownership again. I think they're not gonna they're okay. gonna they run it well. I think it's a nice contrarian play with a high floor. But what do you think about getting him as our running back two? And then maybe even Dalvin Cook yep. in our flex too. Start off with three stud backs and kind of see where we go from there. We can always change it, we can always take one out. But I think those are three guys we can feel pretty confident about as our core. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. So you got three pricey guys, and we're gonna have to get creative as we go further down. They're at 8,200, 7,200, and 6,000. So, we're going to have to save some money. So, we're not going to be able to play Mahomes. We're not going to be able to play any of the high guys. Uh, you, you know, I think Derek Carr could be the nice possibility. We had the right idea last week with the quarterback against the Chiefs. I'm A-OK going back to that well. So we're going to go with Derek All Carr, right. and we're going to go with his number one receiver as well, um, which is Tyrell Williams. And let's go with Waller, too. There um, you go. You're talking. You're talking dirty. I to think me now, that's. Uh, I, you know, I think that I think that plays. And if we're going to go with that, we need to save salary at some point as well. So uh, the Waller play definitely works. Let me see. Yeah, Waller, Waller and Carr are, are both really saving you money. Waller at 3,300, Carr at 5,000, 5,100. And then Williams, who was really impressive last week, only at 44. Yep, that's money saved. Here, Dave, I'm liking the start. We've got two wide receivers and a defense special teams. Let's get that defense filled in right there. I'm a hard no with the Texans. Mm-hmm. The Jaguars still have a have a solid offensive line. They're still a pretty good, relatively good football team. Um, I I think that's a, I think that's going to be a miss. I, I just don't think the Texans defense is that good. Um, Minshew looked more than competent last week, and uh, he looks older than Tom Brady. 
I don't know if you saw that image. One of those quarterbacks is 24, the other is 40. <laughs> a really funny photo comparison going up on on uh, on Twitter. And he's got a sweet mustache. And he's got the sweet mustache. I'm not going anywhere, anywhere near betting against him. Any other defenses <laughs> that you like here? I'm going to shoot out some of the ones that I like. Uh... I like the I like the Titans. I like that too. If we're gonna go Derrick Henry, pairing him with the Titans defense, I did that last week. Um, I'm all in on that. You say no more. Yep, I I think that's a pretty good. I mean, they're they're middle of the pack. I, I they had a good week last week. Um, you know, scored a defensive touchdown, got three picks, five sacks. I mean, I I don't know that they're gonna repeat that necessarily, but um, if I'm gonna you know, if, if what I have left to spend money on is wide receivers and defense, I would rather pony up a little bit for, you know, a receiver than pony up a little bit more for a top Absolutely, defense. and I think it, it, it fits in well with our uh, our lineup, too. Uh, you know, if you get a bruising back like Henry, I think it could be somewhat beneficial to play that defense, too, because if Henry's doing his thing, that means they're controlling the clock. That means they'll probably have a lead, and that uh, means defense mm-hmm. is kind of holding up on their own. And the Titans are out. So what do we got left to spend on these two receivers? We've got 12700 to spend on two wide receivers. So we've got, we've got the Oakland seven. stack here. Um, you've got Walkins. Again, I think he's going to be a chalk guy. Obviously, he's not going to put up 50 points again. Um, there's two ways we can go about it. Again, if this was a, a cash lineup, I would say, hey, let's go with Walkins. Let's just see what this would look like here, right? So we've got two ways to go about it, I think. We could go with Watkins as our wide receiver in the Chiefs, or we can go with a sneaky, 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 sneaky play. Again, it's the $3 entry, so we're going to have to get pretty weird at some point, and we haven't gotten too weird with this one. I think we've got a bunch of pretty good players. Someone who I added up in my season long, I think, can really – really come through here is on the Chiefs. Uh, his first name is uh, eluding me at the moment. Right. Demarcus. I'm talking like Chris Demarcus, Conley? Demarcus, Demarcus. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think Demarcus Robinson could be a nice, cheap option. I think Miko Harmon's going to get a bunch of love this week. And obviously, Watkins is going to be a, a big play. But if you go down to his near minimum price, Demarcus Robinson, it leaves us uh, it leaves us 9200 for our final wide receiver. But looking at that again that's, now, that's too much money. <laughs> looking at it again now, that would, you know, we could play any other wide receiver that we want on the board. But we still have about a thousand left over. Now I like to have, you know, somewhere between five hundred and a thousand left over in a a big tournament entry because it's more of a chance that your lineup's not going to get generated by an algorithm, and it's more of a chance that you're going to have your own independent lineup. So if it does hit, you could be looking at, at a nice spot. Or if we go the safer route. And if we go with uh, Watkins, Watkins, I'd say, is, is a pretty safe floor. It still leaves us 5,500 for a wide receiver. So you're all in on Sammy Watkins uh, for this exercise. I say we I say we go in Watkins there, but I definitely like to present other options uh, after talking. Yeah, i tell you what. Um, if we go 5,500, as I'm looking around the $5,500 line, I'm not really seeing a whole lot. Um, what I think we might be able to sneak in there then um, is I think we'll have enough money if you wanted to go Michael Thomas and go big baller status and still have enough money to get um, Hardman of the Chiefs. You like Hardman of so we can have a little bit, we could have a little bit of both. You like, you like me Cole over Robinson. I mean, not necessarily, but when if we can get Thomas as opposed to yeah I, I mean I guess I'd rather pair those two guys up you know what I mean I I think we we can get Hardman as well as Thomas and I think that provides us with better than what we would be able to get with um with getting uh, Watkins so I, I I like where the heads at but I think I prefer again three dollar one I think I think I prefer uh, 
I might prefer Robinson. You know, uh, obviously Harbin was on the was on the field a lot, uh-huh. um, but I think Robinson is going to be little to no owned, and I think really got to take take a shot there. Um, so again, if you like Michael Thomas, let's uh, let's see this year because again we can go any wide receiver we want. We can go Thomas, we can go Adams. Let's go Thomas in here, and then um, let's just. Slide right in with me, Cole. I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. You can find seven receptions in the section. We actually can't do that. Our remaining salary is negative 100 if we go Michael Thomas oh, and me, no. Cole Harmon. But if I take out me, Cole, and I put Robinson, okay, we've got okay. over 1,000 left. Can, or yeah. we can just change our defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's look and see. Um, let's see, defense. So we could pick any defense we want then. So – um, at that point, yeah, I mean that that makes sense to me. Then, if we could get if we could get Thompson, or uh, not Thompson, if we can get Michael Thomas, uh, get Robinson, gives us what you say a thousand bucks. So, um, it's only eight hundred dollars to to the top defense. So, we can have our pick of uh, Bears against Denver. We could have the Ravens against. We've got three thousand. We've uh, got three thousand left in salary right now. So we're starting off with the Lions, Vikings, Seahawks. I think the Seahawks could be another play. I think uh, I've been seeing him dropped a lot in Yahoo. I think defense is really good. And I, I might, you know, Pittsburgh's going to be at home after a butt whooping. A lot of people expected them to rebound. The, I don't know. I don't know. I think Seattle can come with the sacks. I think they can bring some pressure. And I think they're going to be better than most people are giving – them credit for so the Seahawks could be a uh, contrarian option your Texans are available um, and we've also got uh, another team I don't hate is the Broncos I think Mitch Trubisky stinks and the Broncos at home <laughs> Trubisky in mile high I'm actually talking myself into that one pretty nicely right now uh, yeah I'm not opposed to that one bit I was looking at who's I guess I apologize I misunderstood how much money we had left over um but, yeah, when I was looking at it, the two names around that area that stood out to me, because I know you're against the Texans, which is cool, um, the two that stuck out to me was either San Francisco facing Cincinnati, um, but they're at Cincinnati, or it was the Broncos at home against the Bears. And I think between those two, um, I think most people would probably take the Niners, but I, I'm definitely – in favor of the Bears and or the the Broncos against the Bears. Interesting. In that one. I'm I'm all in on the on the Broncos, but I, I would think most people would pick the Broncos in that one as well. And uh, I, I really? just I, I really like the Broncos there too. So that's one where and again with defense, none of them are chalky. It's really whatever one we think's best. So from well, the top, yeah, I'm good. We've with got Broncos. 300 remaining salary, which is a nice number. Quarterback Derek Carr, running backs Alvin Kamara, Derek Henry. Wide receivers, Tyrell Williams, Miko Hardman, Michael Thomas, Darren Waller as our tight end, Dalvin Cook in the flex, Broncos defense, me liking. I I'm think good. that could be a, a fun one. And uh, hopefully week two is the first time our, uh, our $3 tournament entry gets into the cash. And again, we're doing this one to try and win the big one. You know, we don't care about turning our $3 into $5. We want to go ahead and create a tournament in this $3 entry. When you're entering a $3 tournament, which we talked in last week, it's the equivalent to buying a lottery ticket. You know you're not going to win, you know. But as a wise man once said, but you're saying there's a chance. And uh, why not? We're going to take it. We're going to go balls deep. And we're going we're gonna to take that chance. And we're going we're gonna to see how we do. So it'll be fun to look at it. I know like an alteration of this lineup, it'll be fun to, to build our big ones. And I look forward to, um, you know, look forward to seeing how this one does. Yeah. I look at this, you know, that lineup the same way. Um, you know, we're not, we're not drafting, um, you know, a 50, 50 lineup or something where, you know, we're just, you know, we're not trying to avoid landmines where we're trying to hit home runs. And so, you know, that's where, you know, I kind of prefer the, you know, the Raider stack as opposed to, you know, we could have slid the Saints stack in there, but I, I think other people are going to come up with that. I don't necessarily think 
the Raiders are going to be as popular, you know? So, um, you know, just easy stuff like that, you know, it depends on the kind of tournament you're in sometimes the what strategy do you want to take? Cause like you said, I'm not trying to turn the $3 here into five, I'm trying to turn the $3 into, you know, 500, 5,000. Another thing I want to add to before we wrap this up is again, depending on the entry, the contest you do really happy with DraftKings for having a multi-entry tournament that is affordable. So the $3 one they have, it's a 20 entry max. So you're not competing against all the pros and all the sharks who are having 150 different entries generated by an algorithm where you're against the odds. You know, if you've got $60 to wager for the week and you don't want to put it all in one lineup, you can go ahead and max that out. So you're at 20 entries, just like every other pro in the game. And it really lets you stack it up. Um, so a way that I would go about it is I have, we have this lineup right here. I'll go ahead and I'll copy the same lineup, but I'll take out Miko Hardman for, for Robinson and I'll leave a thousand on the board. I'll also take out Michael Thomas and Hardman and I'll go with Sammy Watkins and another wide receiver. Just so, you know, if the Kansas city stop stuff works, we'll have the one I'll have the one wide receiver on the chiefs coming in the other direction. Uh, so one of those lineups could, uh, could be on a right path if what we predicted is correct. So right now we're predicting Oakland putting up a lot of points, obviously trailing the Chiefs, and one of the Chiefs receivers having a big game. The $3 entry gives you the flexibility to create those multiple different lineups, which I really enjoy. Any final thoughts on balls deep here, Dave, before we, we say sayonara for the week? Well, I am really curious um, to, to see. I think the first thing we might have to discuss next week is how the Texans' uh, defense did against the Jags, because we're we're really quite on opposite ends of that spectrum. And uh, you know, for for defense, I I I'm not rolling with anybody but the Texans. And you know, I wouldn't sit there and bet my house on that being a home run pick. Uh, but I, I I really I really think that has the potential to be, you know, a, a solid pick. Just like I felt like Hawkinson last week, you know, really had a chance to be to be big time. Uh, so, so I'll be curious to, to watch that game if it's on in my area, um, just because I, I want to see, you know, how that matchup plays. You out. don't go to a bar for your Sundays, Dave? No, I'm a family man. Family man. man. You don't bring your kids to the bar? What kind of father are you? <laughs> I know, right? What am I saying? So, hey, well, thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for sticking with us. It's been a, it's been fun doing this, with Dave. We hope to continue this podcast week in week out throughout the rest of the nfl season and uh we hope to keep getting better for you guys keep getting better for ourselves fantasy six pack and uh it's been a uh, it's been an absolute pleasure so i'm bert for dave signing off take it balls deep this weekend and go make some cash